Good evening and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. If you are visiting us today or this evening, that's wonderful. Welcome to our service. For those of you who are regular attenders, um, I hope you have a piece of bread handy and perhaps something to drink for uh, representing the elements of our Holy Lord Jesus Christ. We begin our service with what we call the Collect for Purity. And we join together in these words. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have our opening hymn, Before the Throne of God Above. The words will appear on your screen, so please be free to join in. of our Heavenly Father and we need to say to him how sorry we are for those things which we have done wrong. So we time come to a time of confession. But first we hear the words that our Lord commanded us in order to live the life that he would have us lead. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. And so we join together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who gives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we have the special prayer for today, the first Sunday after Trinity. And so let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We now turn to the Bible and our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. We read from chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel reading comes from Matthew, chapter 9, reading verses 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. Glory to Christ, our Saviour. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 
Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Amen. I will now open up or attempt to open up that word from the Gospel reading. So, here we are at the beginning of a new period in the Church's year. It's called ordinary time, not downtime. It's that time of the year in the Church's calendar that falls outside the major seasons, such as Advent, Epiphany, Lent and Easter. Ordinary time begins after Trinity and continues until the first Sunday of Advent. It's the longest seasons it happens of the Church's year. The term ordinary is simply the time of the year when we're not commemorating the major events in the life of Jesus, such as his birth, his death and resurrection, but rather the things he said and did throughout his time on earth. Most of the days of our lives are ordinary, of course. No birth or death, no epiphanies or miracles, time filled with just the ordinary love and hope and fears common to our daily life. The liturgical colour of this season is green, which is why it's sometimes called the green season, and of course green often symbolises growth. And it's during this time that the church digs deeper into scripture and the life of Jesus. We read his parables and remember how he changed the lives of everyone with whom he came into contact, in ways both big and small. This is a time when we explore what it means to live daily in faith, a time of growth as we explore scripture. Last Sunday, Trinity Sunday, Duncan reminded us of the baptism of Jesus and the acclamation of God the Father that this is my Son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. This Sunday we read how after some considerable time of preaching and healing, Jesus selects those whom he will have as his close companions and prepares them, though they don't know it yet, to go out into the world to make believers of all people. Now I don't know about you, but I sometimes have great difficulty identifying with the image of Jesus as a great shepherd. He is, after all, the Prince of Peace, the Messiah, the Son of God. I'm not saying this to be negative. It's simply I have no experience with sheep. And I do know that the way we care for sheep in this country in Western Europe is very different from Eastern countries and in fact indeed very different from Eastern Europe, where sheep are kept in small groups of about 20 or so and wander the lanes and hills with their shepherd as companion, guide and protector. Many years ago, when I was at my school camp in Braithwaite, in the Lake District, I spoke to a local farmer about the sheep on his farm that he drove out onto the fells during most of the year. And you know, each time I watch one man and his dog, I can see him describing going out each year up onto the fells to gather up the sheep by calling out to them and whistling. Some of the sheep, of course, would ignore the call and stray, and he'd have to go later to round them up. Most, however, simply walk down to the farmyard, 
They did what they were used to doing. They remembered the annual routine. Also, of course, he had two dogs to help him, both of whom he used to help gathering up the sheep. One was older than the other, more mature, more experienced, and you'd lead the younger one when the farmer sent them out to find those missing sheep. Off they would go, scrambling, searching right and left behind rocks in order to round up those strays. You know, in some ways, people are like those sheep on the fells. Some just wander around looking for greener grass or follow the same old trails they've always taken. Yes, there will be the odd one who will go off to find their own piece of pasture, hoping that it will be greener and more lush. But the majority will stay close together for protection, if for no other reason. Are we so different from most people? We are, after all, one big mass of humanity nowadays. Our moods and our interests tend to be influenced by television, the newspapers, the media, advertising. Few of us are truly independent, even if we would like to think that we are. It's easier for us just to ramble on, never quite reaching that farmyard. What we need today are more shepherds of good quality, of course. Jesus told his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. The first lesson we need to notice, I believe, from this passage is that all works for God should begin with prayer. Too often we pray as, as a last resort, don't we? We hear things like, there's nothing left but to pray for somebody who's sick and not appearing to get well. Or we hear people say things like, I've tried everything. Perhaps a little prayer will help. Jesus, on the other hand, instructed his disciples to begin their activity with prayer. Pray the Lord for the labourers, he said. Why go into prayer first? Because it reminds us that the seed that is sown is the Lord's. The fields are the Lord's, and the harvest belongs to the Lord. What most of us really want, of course, is to get safely home to the farm at feeding time. <laughs> Jesus not only identified with us in his time on earth with such passions, but because of our condition, has also sent us teachers, evangelists, and many others to minister to us and to guide us and feed us on our spiritual journey. But then, who did Jesus choose as his first disciples? Did he choose saints? No. He chose people like you and me. They were laymen, not students or experts in theology or the law, but believers with gifts that he could use to further his kingdom. And notice this. He chose them. They were not volunteers answering a call, but chosen by Jesus for the job they were to face. You see, we all have different uses and gifts, and Jesus knows best who to choose and use for the particular job in hand. <laughs> there was a minister who told this story of a university intellectual who attended his church searching for meaning. Understanding the lecturer's ability he preached a whole series of sermons dealing with various intellectual difficulties concerning religion and life. A little time later, that lecturer came to the minister and said that he'd become a convinced Christian and would like to join the church. Well, of course, he was overjoyed. And so he asked him, uh, which of my sermons was it that removed your doubts? Your sermons? Oh, it wasn't any of your sermons. The thing that sent me thinking was that an old frail woman came out of the church one day and stumbled on the steps. When I put out my hand to help her, she smiled and said, Thank you, and then added, Do you love Jesus Christ, my blessed Saviour? You know, he means everything to me. 
I thought about what she said, and I still have some intellectual difficulties, but now he means everything to me too. So that's it. Jesus took rough, tough, unlearned men with their stumbling faith. He took them with their doubts and their faults and made them his friends and co-workers. I wonder how many of us are ambling down old familiar lanes that lead everywhere except to the safety of the farmyard. Where has your life been leading you so far? A Sunday school teacher was testing her pupils after a series of lessons on God's power and omnipotence. Hey, I stumbled over the word myself. She asked, Is there anything God cannot do? Well, of course there was silence. And then finally one lad tentatively put up his hand. The teacher, disappointed that the lesson's point had obviously been missed, asked, Well, just what is it, what is it that God can't do? Well, replied the boy, he can't please everybody. How true. Jesus ministered to the crowds, do you remember? But he never pandered to them. And so we cannot, we must not water down our beliefs just to be acceptable by everyone. Neither do we help anyone when we try to please all by twisting scripture to suit the current trends of society. Scripture is there to guide us, to teach us the ways of God, the ways of Jesus. Jesus died in order to set us free from the power that sin has held over us and continues to hold over us, dragging us away from the truth of Scripture, dragging us away to the wonders of society, to the latest whim. You will read in the Bible often that although Jesus does not approve of sin, he loves the sinner, longs for the sinner to seek repentance and come to him. If you and I are to be counted among the harvest, we need to pray for others, have compassion for the lost and passion for Jesus. Prayer reminds us what we are about. Compassion reminds us that others are like us. And passion reminds us that Jesus works miracles through people like you and me. So what does he want you to do? Well, here's a thing. Why not pray and find out? Amen. Having had Holy Scripture read to us and hopefully opened up so that it helps us to understand some of what God is asking us to do, we now proclaim our faith in words which have come down to us over nearly 2,000 years, words which were struggled over by the early Christians into what do they actually believe. And these are the words which we repeat this evening. And so we join together. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we come now to a time of prayer when we lift our hearts and minds, beseeching the Lord to hear us and respond. And when I use the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen our bishops and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Almighty God, you have called your church to share in your mission to the whole world. Give to us and to all your people such belief in the gospel and such faithfulness in service that the life of mankind may be renewed in the knowledge and love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may serve one another and seek the common good. Lord, in those hand, whose hands are the destinies of the nations, we pray for all who exercise the power of government over the peoples. Make them defenders of liberty and champions of justice, and so rule in their hearts that they may also be makers of peace. Father of mankind, who in your love made all the nations of the world to be one family, help those of different races to love and understand one another better. Take away hatred, jealousy and prejudice, so that all may work together for the coming of your kingdom, your kingdom of righteousness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and seek the common good. Holy Spirit, fountain of light and truth, help us to understand the causes of our social tensions and unrest. Open our eyes to the economic wrongs and racial bias. Deepen our concern for the poor, the old and the handicapped and stir in us all a burning sense of responsibility, one for another, as servants of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. O God of love, we commend to your merciful care and healing grace those whom we have now remembered in our hearts, and we ask you to do for them all that is best according to their need and according to your will. At this time in the nation's history, we pray for all those who work in the NHS, and our doctors, and our carers, Continue to pour into their hearts the love that cares, strength and stamina into their being and the knowledge that they are serving your purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially we remember Stephen Pym, someone who loved you so dearly 
and serve the people of this village so faithfully, welcoming the stranger. Be with his family as they mourn the loss of his presence, but may they rejoice that he is now with you at peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Whilst we remain in an attitude of prayer, we prepare ourselves for communion. We join together in the prayer of humble access. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We now sing our second hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds in a Believer's Ear. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning. 
and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may symbolise to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. As we look for his coming in glory, we remember with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer prayer that our Saviour Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We broke this bread because we all share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Remember the body of Christ broken for each one of us. Remember the blood of Christ shed that we might have our sins forgiven and come into his presence saved sinners.
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We, who drink his cup, bring life to others. We, whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for providing us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. to us and to all your people in times of anxiety serenity in times of hardship courage in times of uncertainty patience and at all times a quiet trust in your wisdom and love 
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day for evermore. Amen. So now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.